I've been doing a little bit of tidying up in the shop and rearranging things slightly um, to get better access. Ultimately I need to move nearly all the machines in here to a better layout and uh, also just get rid of some stuff, um, get some projects that are in here um, into a state um, that they can uh, go into a better position. Um, just to the left of the door is a rotary compressor uh, that I need to uh, get finished up and installed but I've got to get the piston compressor um, that it'll sit next to uh, sorted first but uh, if we go around the back I'll show you the project that I'm just doing a little bit of work on at the moment so come round behind the long chang first and up against the wall at the back there is a Denford Easy Turn CNC lathe um, that needs an electronics refit and in front of it in the cream uh, is a Denford Easy Mill which is also a CNC machine and this is a Taiwanese milling machine and I'm sure most of you are familiar with um, John Mills uh, aka Double Boost's channel as a very similar milling machine to his um, this is a Taiwanese machine and they were supplied to Denford um, as part machine castings and the head is sitting on the trolley down there at the back you can't really see it uh, and he's only uh, part machined so it's basically been bored for the quill but none of the fine down feed mechanism or anything like that um, was machined or installed uh, because it was um, had a, a ball screw drive to the quill. Um, now that actually was one of the real weak points of the machine and if you see this plate sitting on top of the column this is how the z-axis was driven so in the slot here was the end of the lead screw uh, the ball screw um, and it used a rotating nut design mounted in bearings uh, with the lead screw being stationary and it just clamped around the spindle nose and I, I seem to recall some time back talking about this in a video but this is a cast aluminium spindle nose slightly porous and you can see that there's all of two turns of thread but if I come round a little it's just blown the thread off, it's just fractured um, and this was a common problem on these mills you know, the spindles again on the trolley and I machined up a steel replacement nose cap but I still didn't want to um, drive the quill with this clamp plate arrangement um, there's quite a limited travel and it's obviously not a particularly strong way of doing it so I decided to convert uh, the machine to knee driven operation so you can see the original knee lead screw and to the right of it um, a ball screw and this came off eBay very cheaply out of a scrapped EDM machine um, it's got just about enough travel to max out what the, um, the dovetail will do. Um, I'll probably restrict it a little bit more in software just to make sure we don't run into the ends, but it's, it's a decent travel. Um, but I needed to make a riser for it, so that was the job I did yesterday, which was just pushing a... Uh, 30 some millimeter hole all the way through that bit of 65 millimeter diameter st steel stock so you know it's a little over two inches diameter it's 150 mil but roughly six inches long and it was a fairly tedious drilling job we've got a nice hole in there good and straight um, I've got a flange at the bottom there that'll get welded on and we need some bolt patterns in it and then that matches up with the knee and that's an original uh, stepper motor adapter plate 
with a more modern um, stepper motor. There's the original in the uh, Denford cream. They went for this cream and blue colour scheme. And that's a 1984 technology motor, so um, pretty limited in performance. Uh, and these are the hybrid stepper motors that incorporate an encoder on the back of the motor and the electronics takes care of pumping enough current into the coils to generate the required torque. Um, you won't get missed steps. If the following error becomes too large, the drive will error out and can report back to the, uh, the control software. Uh, now hopefully this is going to give me um, at least as much torque as the original motors, which ran a um, 1 to 2 reduction, whereas I'm going to run them 1 to 1, but give me higher speeds. Um, if not, we'll, we'll come back down in, uh, in the pulley diameter um, to sort it out. To convert the knee, you can see this. I just had the camera cut out there. Uh, I don't think the memory cards like the, uh, um, the temperature and they report a write error. But the plate on the side of the knee there covers up where the original knee shaft uh, went in. So similar arrangement to a bridge port but it was a bolted on casting uh, rather than an integral one. And up inside you can see the bearing housing. So where on top of that there would have been um, a pair of skew gears that's where the, um, the tooth belt pulley will run. And I've got to make an arrangement to hold a plate off the inside of this plate to mount the motor, um, which is just a little bit fiddly, particularly getting the alignments um, sorted out. And then the um, the knee will get some um, some gas struts to um, counterbalance the weight, so that the uh, the motor isn't working against gravity all the time, which is a uh, fairly common arrangement on a CNC knee mill and there's the uh, the bigger motor for the knee. I need to put the uh, bolt pattern for this ball nut onto the end of, the, um, end of this riser. Um, I've already sent it up using my Sean uh, 3D taster and I need to get the uh, the bolt pattern. So I've already determined that a five millimeter drill bit is a sorry, a five point five millimeter drill bit is a good close fit in the holes. So then I can measure over the outside. and get 56.5, so minus the 5.5, it's a 51mm um, bolt pattern. So, got my super spacer on here, and I've got the knee down absolutely as far as it will go. Um, you know, it's one of those times you think, I could do with a riser block. So um, I'll keep my eyes open for one, um, although at the moment the mill will go under uh, the beams in here um, if I needed to move it and with a riser block on I'd have to take the motor off, but although I am planning to move the mill at some stage, moving the motor is not too big a job, so um, if, a, if a riser block comes along I think I'll get hold of it. Um, now I'm going to be very short of uh, room with the drill chuck on there. I might just get away with it, but what I can do instead is use an ER 
call it chuck, which saves me a little bit of room. And uh, hold the drill bits with the, the collet chuck. So, having got the, the DRO zeroed on the centre, I can move off centre and take the taster out and uh, get set up. Okay, so I've got a spotting drill in the ER collet. I'm over the 25.5mm uh, offset from centreline to give you my 51 millimeter total and I'm just going to spot these uh, and barely put a spot in sixty degrees. Now I'll change the drill, the spotting drill for the uh, tapping size. does unfortunately mean changing the collet because the uh, it's a three to four collet it was a four millimeter spotting drill I probably would have just about had enough height um, with the drill chuck but also just demonstrating that sometimes this can be a way of Gaining that little extra clearance. This is the four to five collet, so I've got actually got a uh, compress it quite a long way. Do it by locking the spindle, gauge the back gear. Okay. And I use my recently installed quill readout. I'm going to go down um, 10 millimetres.
so I'll just give those holes, holes a chamfer and then we can tap them. It does of course unfortunately mean changing the collet again. zero out my quell readout again so I can get a consistent depth on the chamfer. Looks good. Finally, have to tap them. I'm doing a trial fit up of the knee assembly and the riser is now in temporarily installed and you can see it's got a new uh, well it's got a mounting flange that I've made and I now know how much I want to trim off the riser to get the knee to go down to the uh, the bottom of the dovetails and you can also see in here the two step motors. This um, mounting plate at the front is original um, but has the new motor on <coughs> which is just ooh, 10 millimeters longer than the old motor perhaps. And the knee motor is very close to where it would end up and there's just enough room. So if we're looking from the top, I can get some lighting. So you can see the two pulleys in the belt drive and that's plate in there is uh, the old Z mount mo uh, motor mounting plate which I probably will actually replace in the end and it's very difficult to see in here let's just try that block there will bridge from the motor mounting plate to the plate that's bolted to the side of the knee 
which is in place of the original um, knee shaft. So, as I think I've said before, uh, this would have had an arrangement quite similar to a bridge port with a shaft going in at an angle, operating a set of skew gears on the end of the knee lead screw. So, obviously, I've got to get this plate uh, set parallel to the top, uh, the lead screw being perpendicular to the top. And uh, so we'll, when I'm happy with everything, it'll get drilled and some uh, roll pins put in for location. Uh, and I think we're making good progress at this stage.